I be burning GP in that new GT, the Kofi Freeze. I bleed new Giddy, the weed 250 a half, it's the gas. My name lads out in Brooklyn, I can rap, I be juxin, and I'm good looking. Hey yo, if you making music out there, make sure you promoting on my YouTube channel and my Instagram page. You heard my reels is on fire. Make sure you get at me. DM me at Real St. Laz on Instagram or send me an email at the LLC at gmail.com. That's a whole fact. Hey yo, shout out to the bro T-Bone Blast. Shout out to the whole Van Dyke, the whole Brownsville. If you from Brownsville out there, getting them comments. Let me know what projects you repping, what block, what Ave, what street. You're a snow bunny. You heard? Comment gang form up like the spaceship Voltron. You know, the spaceship Voltron had about a hundred different compartments. So when I say form up like the spaceship Voltron is different. We super deep. You heard? Rikers Island Legends, the series broadcasting live from New York City. It's the hottest channel on these YouTube screens. The best jail stories and hood stories are here. Make sure you subscribe today. LAZ. This motherfucker was like, yo, tomorrow morning I'm giving out the breakfast because you know the how the food come to the house. Don't one of you motherfuckers come up with no milk. Soon as one of you motherfuckers come up with some milk, I'm slapping the shit out you. Okay, I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> okay, I had a fuck enough now. So now I stand up. So I'm like, yo, bro, we might as well skip the preliminaries. Act like breakfast is already here. Act like the milk is already here. Act like I already got my milk. What we doing? So either way around, I already jerked on the music. I'm not going to dance, so I already stood up. So I'm like, nah, I don't know what been going on in this motherfucking house, but ain't nobody violating nobody black in this motherfucker. That's a rap. Boy T Bone Blast on the motherfucking check in. Hey yo, before I begin what I'm here to do, I want to just talk about a little bit of Brownville music. You know what I mean? Because I feel like we ain't getting our just do over there. You know what I mean? Y'all know about the MOPs, the Smoother Hustlers, the Triggers, and of course the Boot Camp Clicks. But y'all got to know about people like the Lawyer, Trendsetter Meta. Boss Major SG, the Moolah Cash Cow. And we got the women that be spitting too, man. Burner P, which is the first lady of boot camp click. You know what I mean? That's Sean P. Rest in power. That's his wife, man. That's Bonnie K. Goddess Panamami. We can't forget about the clicks like Duddy Brown and the FOH movement, the Mugger Gang. Shout out to Busy Maybag, A Wall, and motherfucking Range Rover, Range Rover Ruga, Ty, Ty Mugger. Me and A Wall got something on that. They new album. They got some mixtape called um, uh, Motherfucking Brooklyn Gumbo. You know what I mean? Go listen to that. You got Fly Up the Tide and Rock Boy G's. I want to shout them out too. They got a they got a motherfucking gym over there, DR Period. You can't go wrong with that. And I can't forget King Price and them triple M guys over there, man. That millionaire minded music group, you know what I mean? They doing what they do over there, man. King Price actually is the videographer as well as the engineer of 50 Villains Deep, you know what I mean? That classic hit that we did, that Brownville music, man. Give us our props. We got it, man. Listen to the 50 Villains Deep one on my podcast, man. T-Bone Blast slash Brooklyn Approved, man. You know what I mean? But I ain't going to be long-winded with this shit. Uh, let is me this get to one, what I'm one rapper through, you man. from Brownsville you forgot to mention, though? Who I forgot to mention? This kid named St. Laz from Howard. 
That gets oh, stupid I keep, busy. Oh, yeah, the one and only St. Last up, man. St. Mother Last, man. Mm-hmm. In fact, man, we already got some shit that we did together. Me, St. Last, the boy Saigon, and the boy King Christ, man. And we going, we about to put some shit out, man. You know what I mean? It's some, wow. you know, some anti-violence shit that we put together, man. But, but let me get, you know... Let me let me let me get to the regular scheduled program. Come here, what I'm here to do, man. But like I said, the Fifty Villains Deep Song is on T Bone Blast slash Brooklyn Crew. That's my YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Tap in so you get that and some other music. But. I ain't going to be long-winded with that. I get more into my channel later on in discussion. You know what I mean? Um, so with that said, man, salute, salute, man. St. Last, it's been a while since we put this kind of work in. But on deck, just like I said, I would be. My beloved, man. Brownville and St. Last, salute, man. He he an inspiration to a lot of us that be doing this motherfucking YouTube shit, especially when we tell his jail story shit. I always let motherfuckers know that straight up. You know what I mean? I don't know what the name of this episode gonna be, but um, I'm taking this shit back to 2015, which is my last time on Rikers Allen. You know what I mean? If you go back to the very first story I ever did on St. Last, you know what I mean? Now, the first story I ever did, I think it's called, um, I was, you know, jumped in some houses or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? That's the first time, 1992. I'm going, I'm going all the way to 2015, my last time on Rikers Island. I, I actually got to Rikers Island for a good reason. Yeah, well, I was really there 2014, but I stayed there for a year. But I was there for a good reason. I was there for reversal. I had two cases at 22 years. You know what I mean? Um, I had two cases in two different counties, and I had got a reversal on my case. You know what I mean? Not a reversal where they saying that I'm innocent, where I'm going home. It's something called a reverse and remand. It means you just go, they fucked up somewhere along the line, and they, you know, they giving you opportunity to go to trial again, or either cop out or whatever have you, you know, whatever, you know, the case may be. But I, 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 I'm back on Rikers Island for this very reason. So that's why I say it's a good reason. So I'm on a different type of timing. Right? So I comes to Rikers Island. The first building I hit, obviously, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the full building receiving room. You said you came from up north, though, right? I came from Sing Sing Correctional Facility. You know what I mean? Um, and the crazy shit is, when I left, they sent me my forty dollars, and you know they gave me my forty dollars, you know the gate money and all that before I left. Like, and I got a reverse on the case. It's crazy. <laughs> all right, cool. So now I'm in the receiver room. I'm, I come down with about eight, nine people. And um, we all come from different jails. We all get up in downstate or whatever, in different downstate. Those that don't know, downstate is like the central prison for all prisons. You know what I mean? You get there first, and then you go to wherever prison you go into. In my case, I got there, and I was leaving prison to go to a jail, Rikers Island. You know what I mean? So we on Rikers Island. We in the full building in process. Now... Rikers Allen, I have in mind you, this is 2014 when I got there, when I come back down. I went to Rikers Allen one time for about two weeks for the same reason of reversal in 2013 when I first got it, but I was only there for two weeks. That's when I ran into um, Jay Diamonds. I talked about that in a Talk in That Walk episode um, Friends the Enemies. You know what I mean? Go check that out. But anyway... Um. So, and before that, I haven't been to Rikers Island since I came up north, which is in 06. So this is like 10 years late. I haven't been to Rikers Island. A lot of shit changed. One of the first things I learned, they got some shit. A dude that came down from up north, he said, yo, say you um heat sensitive. <laughs> heat sensitive. I said, what the fuck is that? You 
know what I'm saying? So he was like, yo, they got some houses. I swear to God, I never heard this shit in my life. You know what I mean? He said, you go to that, you know, records out of mind, you in September, so it's still hot as shit on the island. It's still summertime, just was over, so it's still baking. So he said, you say you hit heat sensitive, they're going to put you in a dorm or either a cell house with air conditioning. So I'm like, word, I'm like, it ain't no program or no suspect kind of house, right? Like, nah, it's regular population houses, but you go and dig with, it's just population houses. Just You just be in a house with AC. I said, so why everybody, he said, a lot of people do be doing high. So sure enough, I went to the nurse. It was like, yo, I said, I'm heat sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> the nurse say, the nurse say, what, why you heat sensitive? I ain't even think to ask the motherfucker what to say when the nurse asked me that shit. So I'm just like, I don't know, man. I'm heat sensitive. I just said the first thing that came to my mind. I don't know what, what it, remember what it was. But the nurse smiled because she probably was so used to hearing that. She just wrote me the pass. I'm heat sensitive. All right, cool. Now, because I still, I only got a reversal for one case, so my class, my classification is dumb high. So I can't go to no dorm. So the dudes that was heat sensitive, it was like about four or five of us that said we was heat sensitive. Okay, we on our way to the beacon. I'm thinking the whole time. Why the fuck did I say that I was heat sensitive? Because now I'm not in the full good. I'm going to the beacon. <coughs> And what made things worse, it was somebody that was already there, that was already on Rikers Island. This motherfucker was, I don't know what the fuck he got into, but they put him on a bus with us to go to the beacon. The whole time, son, spazzing. He spazzing like, yo, now he a blood dude, obviously. Is he talking all this blood shit or whatever the case may be? But he's going ham on the bus. He don't want to go to the beacon. He letting the police know straight up and down. As soon as I get there, I'm making something happen. I'm making a movie. Ah, police laughing at him or whatever the case may be. We pull up to the beacon. Now, me, I've been around. I don't take threats like lightly. I ain't no son. I ain't got no beef with him, but I ain't know him. So I ain't, I, I'm watching him because I ain't going to let him stunt me. You know what I'm saying? So we all get off the bus, but just so happens, so we get off the bus, we get in the rear room, um, receiving room. I'm making sure I'm watching this dude. This dude literally, everybody else acting like sun don't exist. And he blew this shit out one of the dudes that came down from up north. He was the only one that didn't come down from up north that was on the bus with us. That could have been any one of us. But like I said, I was already watching, son. Son ain't want to go to that beacon. A lot of Crips was in the beacon now. But whatever the case, he followed through on what he said he was going to do. He was going to, he said he was going to make a movie. And he made one. And literally, it's my first day down from up north. And I'm seeing this shit. I haven't been down since 2006. So I'm, but I'm used to seeing people get shot and all that. You know what I mean? So it wasn't nothing new, but yo. He had just picked a random dude and blew fire out of him? He picked a random dude. Or maybe they did have this. I don't know. But he picked, cause, I mean, they couldn't have had issues because Sun just came down from up north. He ain't come down from the jail that I was in. But we all we all had the brown suits on and shit except for Sun. But just so happy, and then, oh, yeah, after he blew Sun right in the receiver room, we still got cups on. They start beating the shit out, this motherfucker. But the beacon is him. At the same time, they wilding on him right in front of us. They watching him. They runs to another law. Come to find out, hear about somebody else getting shot over there. So at the meantime, police running in hysteria. The ones we, it's like four or five of us, they tell us to get on the wall. We on the wall, facing the wall. And all of a sudden, another police come out of nowhere and say, all the guys get on your knees, face the wall on your knees. So dudes start dropping. So the dude that handcuffed to me, he was about to start dropping too, man. But I stayed on the motherfucking wall. So when the police said, do you hear what I said? He went to him first. I respect the fact that son ain't blow it up. He he just told the police that he had a knee problem and all that. So police came to me and said, so what's up? You got a knee problem too? I said, no, I ain't got no motherfucking knee problem, but I ain't getting on my motherfucking knee. <laughs> I still ain't getting on my 
hot shit. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't want no smoke. I'm just, I'm like I said, I'm gonna write yo, last. I'm one of them type of dudes that be seeming like, even if I'm just trying to chill, like some stupid shit always fall in my lap. But this ain't go nowhere. You know what I mean? Because it was a, it was a CO that was an actual, that was a dep. He was a CO in old boy when I was in a bing back in 97 there. He remembered me. So they didn't watch me because they act like they, but you know what they did? They said, you know what? We don't want none of these motherfuckers. And they refused all of us. I guess they shut the beacon down because shit was haywire that night. So now I'm thinking we going back to the four building. But guess what? I don't forget that heat sensitive. They were serious about that shit. I knew nothing about that shit. <laughs> I just wanted to get somewhere because I had a bag full of tobacco. I had a whole draft bag full of tobacco that I just wanted to get to. I ain't want that shit. We going to all these different buildings. You know, they be lacking on the searching. So I ain't want to just go to a building where all of a sudden they want to be on some real Dr. Sleuth shit. Want to get on some <laughs> spy my shit. You know what I'm saying? I I only, like two, I only had like two pounds of but the rest, I had like 40 pounds you know, throughout my draft bag. And I had a big draft bag with law work that wasn't even mine and shit like that. But I had that, sh- um, man, I don't even want to tell you the system just in case somebody else do it. But in, in, in any event, I wanted to get back to that. So here we go. We go, where we going now? They said we going to the tombs. Because no other cell building with high classification had air conditioned cells. So that heat sensitive. So, so dudes all happy. I ain't never been to the tombs before in my life. You know what I'm saying? So dudes all happy, like, oh shit, we going to the tombs and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is it? They said it's sweet over uh, there. Uh, huh? No, I was laughing. I think you know, I never you been there before? Yeah, I was in that mother I was in that motherfucker twice. Yeah. So but dude, it, it's a different it's a, it's a whole different way yeah, from right that now. That's all they do in the tombs is threaten niggas, threaten niggas to send niggas to the island. What? Act up, nigga, oh, you go to the that. building. Yo, that's crazy you said that. So now we go to the to- uh, we go to the tomb. Dude is happy. Like I said, I was already happy anyway because I'm down on a reversal now. You know what I mean? I got one she's like, I'm reverse and remanded, like I said earlier. You know what I mean? It don't mean that they saying I'm innocent. So I'm trying to, you know, either I'm seeing what's going on, you know what I mean? Which I ain't trying to get into like that as far as what's going on. You know what I mean? As far as who's still available, who's not. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, you know, because at the end of the day, if I got to cop out, I'm going to cop out. But I'm going to cop out to something as less as I could. You know what I'm saying? It's another shot. So I'm on a different kind of energy, last. Like, I'm not on that energy where I'm looking for smoke. But, you know, I go to, I, so the, 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 the tunes turned out to be just what dude said it was. I go to tunes, and not only that, I couldn't have landed in a better place to get my tobacco off. Cause it was bud all over the place, but it wasn't no tobacco. And I had it all. It was to the point where, you know, big bank take little bank. It was a couple of dudes that had tobacco, but they didn't have, cause you gotta remember, not too many dudes come from up north to the tombs. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that, that's some rare shit. So I'm coming from up north with all these motherfucking pouches. Yo, I'm getting crazy in there, bro. Like on some real shit. Like, 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 you know, up north, you might got to pay two bricks for one decent stick of bun. Yo, man, I'm giving up 20s for 20s. Like, I was giving up a sugar bag of tobacco for a sugar bag of bun. <laughs> it was like Bud was like so much a necessity to buy you with that shit on Rikers Island was more than Bud, bro. Remember, I came back, yo. Before I left, I had a little bit of Bud. It was to the point where I was selling dudes, give me a pouch for a stick. You know, to them that's a deal. But I already know I'm going back down. You know what I'm saying? That shit. That I'm, I'm about to take off with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, 
but I didn't know it was going to be this serious. I'm not going to front. I remember I was making these big ass fingers. For those that don't know, that's when you take a plastic glove, fill each finger up to the top with bud. I'm thinking I'm, the first two dudes got over. I sold that the whole finger to them for $25. The dude that happened to be there, he said, yo, you bugging. Yeah. And I'm putting paper in it with it. I'm, I'm giving them paper with it and all that. He said, son, you bugging. He said, you selling that for 25 He said, man, he made some shit for me. He said, man, it was like a half a thing. He said, don't put no paper in there. That's $50 right there. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yo, son, I, I was feeling bad. I was like, no, I can't get nobody no shit like this for $50. He's like, yo, bro, all that up north shit, Rikers Island, that's $50, bro. Easy. A half a finger full of, full of buzz. So I was giving dudes a, a like, you know, I was looking out, but at the same time, bro, that shit was crazy down there, bro. But I ain't have no, there was no, there was a couple of dudes that got lumped up. I heard of a shooting one time we got locked down because it was a shooting in another house. But the house that I was in, it was pretty much laid back. You know what I'm saying? I remember I had one little minor little Thing, but it ain't go nowhere with the Muslims because when I was up north, I always, um, I always um, fasted with the NOIs. I'm not NOI, but I fucks with the teachings and all that. You know what I mean? Farrakhan, salute to him. You know what I mean? But I'm not a member of the NOI nation, but I do fast with them during Ramadan. So, you know, me being in prison all these years, I'm not thinking that Rikers Island don't have no Ramadan for NOIs. So, but I had the Muslim ID, so I went down there with the Muslims, you know what I mean? And they would, they all that guest shit in a tomb, they ain't go for that. You had to be straight Sunni Muslim. You know what I'm saying? But, um, so when I went down there, you know, they don't know me. <laughs> I was like, I'm with it in a while. Um, fast that. It was like, nah, it ain't over here. But just so happened, it was like two or three dudes that I know from Benton and all that. So he yeah, ain't really go to nothing. They was like, nah, and they, you know, I rock. They let me rock. Not on no Debo shit, just out of respect. They say I wasn't on that bullshit or whatever. And plus, I'm just coming down from up north. So that was probably the only little minor issue that I had. But it ain't go nowhere. But other than that, I seen dudes that was going to Rikers Island from the tombs. And they literally had to get dragged out of there. I ain't see that shit since C, since C74 back in the days when dudes was going to other houses I seen grown men not want to go to the island and like me I didn't have to never think about that because I was coming from the island to the tombs I, I wasn't coming from the street to the tombs so I was already there I was me and like maybe two other dudes were there long enough to see that whole house for twice so I was good there but eventually my number played my number played for a good reason you know what I mean remember I said I got a reversal on one case I ended up getting a reversal on the second case which I knew I was gonna get I'm gonna explain that shit real quick I got a I got blue trial on one in one county where I received 22 to life I copped out in another county to 16 with the agreement that it's gonna go concurrent with the case that I blew trial to being that it was over the amount of time that they was offering me so now here's the thing with that I end up getting the reversal on the case that I blew trial to. You know what I mean? So when you get a reversal on the case that you blew trial to and the case that you copped out to, you copped out to that to run concurrent with the case that you blew trial to, that case automatically get dismissed. I mean, not dismissed, but reversed as well, if you choose to. Now, I sat on that for a while, is because on that, on them cases, they kind of had me dead to right. And so I copped out to them cases. Now, here's the thing with that. I'll give you an example. Let's say if you got a, you shot somebody for assault in the frame, you get assault in the first degree. You on an island for a while. You on an island for like a year or two fighting it. They give you a plea deal. They be like, I, right, you know, cop out to these five years but for robbery. In the, I mean, excuse me, assault in the third degree. 
you cop out, and then you go up north and you find a little loophole. You put in a pill, you get a reversal. Say you get a reversal. But the thing with that, when you blow trial and get a reversal, if you blow trial again, the most you could get is what you already went down with. But when you blow trial, I mean, when you cop out, and you put it for reversal and you get it, then you face the overall indictment again. So you can end up coming up with more time than you went down there with. So that was my situation. So I was kind of like, but then at the same time, I'm thinking like 10 years past, I'm like, fuck it, roll the dice. You know what I'm saying? And I remember, and I'm going to tell you how serious that is. I remember was this dude when I was in Sing Sing. I'm telling him about my shit, this kid named Knowledge and shit. And he was like, yo, man, do what you're going to do. But I'm not telling you, you know what I mean? Just cop out, but don't. He said, I had that very same predicament. I was like, what you mean? He said he blew trial. No, he excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. He copped out to 20 to click. You know what I mean? He copped out to 20 to click. He ended up getting a reversal. He put in for reversal. He got it for some kind of technicality. They was offering him 15 to click. He said he'll take 15 flat. He ain't taking nothing with life. He ended up, so they said, fuck you. Then he said he'll get take 20 to click with nothing with life. They said, fuck you. He ended up going to trial, blowing. He came back up north with 32 and a third to life. And when he had this conversation with me, he had 25 years in. So he was like, so basically, that always stuck with me. Salute to Nano, if you listening to this, I never forgot that, what you told me right before I went back down to write this alley. Real shit. I never forgot. He probably think I did, because it was like a footnote kind of conversation, but, but for some reason, hold on. For some reason, that shit stuck with me. You know what I mean? I always remember that shit. So anyway, so I'm in the tombs, and this is how my number played. This is how I went back down to Rikers Island. I was only there because I had a high cut. You know, at, when you convicted already, you got you got a high class vacation. Now, when my other case got dismissed, not dismissed, when I got a reversal for my other case, and I, and I got my $40, my other $40, it's a funny shit, before I even knew I got the reversal, they sent my $40 through the mail, right, with a letter saying I got 30 days to get all my property that I left in Sing Sing, because now the state have nothing to do with me no more. Both of my cases were reversed. I'm back a regular detainee now. So I'm right, but I'm like, hold up. <laughs> I, might, I might cop out. I might go back up north. I don't want to start all over. I might get a new number. I don't got no property. So I'm right in Albany. And, you know, for the, and I'm explaining to them the situation. And the whole time I was there, they was giving me dates that I had to come get my shit. And I will write them each month. Every day they give me, I will write them five days before that date and get an extension. I was on Rikers Island for a year. Damn near a year. So I got about 11 extensions. Like, they checked my shit. You know what I mean? Because they was ready to destroy my shit. And I'm like, hold up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, fuck all that. But anyway, so when the other case got dismissed, now I'm facing a whole indictment again, but Guess what? My classification dropped. They could have put me in a cell house in the tombs, but they decided to send me back to Rikers Island. I made no argument. You know what I mean? Because I see how all them other motherfuckers that left beefing about not leaving, they looked just straight silly. You know what I mean? So I made no argument about the shit. It is what it is. I had a nice four-month run over there. You know what I mean? I've been down for about four or five months now from up north. So now it's my turn to go to Rikers Island, and they were sending me to C-95. I get to C-95. Now, you know C-95, they said it's San Juan. Spanish motherfuckers is deep. And they put me in a dorm. Remember, I said my classification dropped. You know what I mean? So they put me in a dorm. I, I ain't been in a dorm since I was an adolescent. Remember when I said I want the type of motherfuckers that no matter how chill I try to be, it seemed like a problem always fall in my lap. Day one on the island. Now, mind you, I came back down maybe four, three, four months ago before that, chilling the whole time. Day one on the island. 
first of all, I ain't like the fact that I was on Broadway. They put me on there, they put me on Broadway or whatever. But I wasn't going to sleep that night anyway. I'm going to definitely give me a bet against the wall. I don't even know if dude's still on that type of shit. But I was on that type of shit. I wasn't feel comfortable laying there. And then my, my bed, as soon as motherfuckers come out the bathroom, it's a row of beds right there. Like, my shit right there. Like, oh, that's a no-go. <laughs> That wasn't happening. You know what I'm saying? So dudes don't know I'm just coming back down from up north because, like I said, by this time I got like four months in. You know what I mean? I got regular clothes. I got my browns in my bag, but I got my regular clothes on. Remember, I had back so I got mad footwear, mad clothes. But when I came up, I had wild back, I was getting busy, so I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So when I came from the tombs to C95, I got regular clothes on, so I look like I'm just some. I don't look like I came down from up north. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So I come to C95. I get there. It's like nighttime already. I'm not in the house an hour and a half. I'm, a, I'm surveying the scene. I already seen like the Spanish dudes is controlling the house. Even though it's half and half. It's like half blacks, half Spanish. But for some reason, I already was able to peep from the vibe that the Spanish dudes had the house. You know what I mean? So, I get on the phone. All I know is while I'm on the phone, I hear beefing. This is my, cause now the phones, you know, it's clicks. My click ran out just as I hear beefing. So I see the Spanish dude with a long ponytail. The dudes had the real Ugg mug. He, had, he definitely had the look. He had the slick rick patch on his eye ugly motherfucker too, you know what I'm saying? So he was up there going in the front of the whole fucking house beefing. Yo, who the fuck stole my milk? Now, I don't know what he took my... I later I later found out that, you know, remember, it's a dorm. I'm not used to this dorm shit. It's my first time in the dorm, but when they had, in a long time, so they got, like, ice coolers. They got, like, coolers with ice in it in the day room, and dudes be putting their milk there. But like I said, at this time, I don't know what the fuck he talking about. So he must have had his milk there, and somebody must have drunk it. So he come out. Was some stupid shit. Now it's like three, it's three police in a the bubble. They all black, they all women. You know what I mean? So he putting on a heavy show in front of them. Now I'm just coming down. I don't know what the fuck going on. I'm not in the house an hour and a half yet. <laughs> so this motherfucker and it's making this hardcore speech. Who the fuck took my milk? This and that, that and this. He wilding. Walking up and down the house now. I don't really like being in. I don't really like being in the house where I feel like I'm under siege and shit. Like at the same time, like, like who fuck is this dude? You know what I mean? I got the hammer on me, and even though, like I said, I'm not on that kind of. I wasn't down there on that kind of energy, bro. Cause I'm near to give some time back. I'm near on a different type of vibe. But I never forget where I'm at. I'm still in prison. Even when I came home, I, when I went home from Sing Sing, the, I, I was gonna hold my ratchet all the way to the last, to the second, to the last day when I left. The only reason why I gave my ratchet up before that, like a week before I left, I swear to God, last, is because now I don't know if you've been in um Sing Sing before, but I was on the flats where my where my cell is facing the gym. I could see the gym, so I was already going shut it down. I knew that I was going home soon. You know what I mean? So, but you know, I said, "Fuck it." You know me. I kept saying, "I'm gonna shut it down in two weeks." Then I shut it down in ten days. But I always would come out. And I got this stupid shit, so I come out just to the gym use the phone go back to my cell this particular day i'm waiting to go to my i'm waiting to go to the gym they ran a couple houses um i ain't going front i see dudes out here rumbling i look out my cell dudes coming out there bleeding the dude pop pop i forgot his name man but he i know he was um what was he mac baller i think mac ballers was getting it on and shit it was blood on blood shit man a couple of them got shot and I already knew, like, it's over. So they, they locked the jail down. So being that they locked the jail down, I already knew the jail was going to be locked down until I went home. So I sent, my, I sent somebody, I sent one of the comrades my ratchet. Otherwise, I would have held that shit to the day before. You know what I'm saying? So same with this. I got a reversal. It's all good. But 
I know how I move. I done shot a lot of shit. I don't know who the fuck is out there, so I got to make sure I'm on point. So I have a ratchet, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't like I come in the house with nothing. So when this dude walking around me fronting, but like I said, he ain't talking directly to me, and I was trying like God to ignore this motherfucker, but I'm even though I'm not comfortable with feeling like I'm under siege, I'm looking at all these other black motherfuckers, none of them saying shit. This the Spanish dude, they standing out like and sun just front and I'm looking in the bubble. I see the CO bitches kiki and like they really thinking this shit cute. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, oh my god, like what the fuck? So he up there scowling, like, yo, fuck to my milk, yo, and this the part that really got my attention. This motherfucker was like, yo, tomorrow morning I'm giving off the breakfast because you know the how the food come to the house. Don't one of you motherfuckers come up with no milk. Soon as one of you motherfuckers come up with some milk, I'm slapping the shit out you. Okay, I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Okay, I had a fuck enough now. So now I stand up. I'm like, yo, bro, we might as well skip the preliminaries. Act like breakfast already here. Act like the milk is already here. Act like I already got my milk. What we doing? <laughs> so he looking at me and out of nowhere before he got a chance to respond, another black dude who I don't even know, and I swear to God, before this interview lasts, I literally was looking through my my Insta, my I group, my IG, right? Cause I swear to God, like a couple of months ago, you know, this kid was following me and shit. Or, and I looked to see who it was and it was him. And I'm like, oh shit. But I forgot his motherfucking name. I just know he's from Jersey. I was looking through my IG cause I was definitely gonna give him a shout out in, in his story. But he's from Jersey and all that. He stood up, he stood up. He he, he, and he was he, he was like a year, like a year older than me and shit. I found out later he rapped and shit. And he had a little size. And he was like short, but he was a stocky motherfucker, right? He was like, yo, son, I'm gonna ride with you, man. I was like, yo, you got something? Because I got my blicky on me. That motherfucker was like, yo, man, I'm from Jersey. I got my hands. Like, when he said that, I kind of was taken aback. Like, I felt a little offended. Like, the fuck you trying to say? But that wasn't no time to address that right now. You side by side with me against these suckers. You know what I mean? So, so now all of a sudden homeboy the whole time changed cause homeboy like yo son now nah, he like yo bud now nah, like OG I ain't even talking to him he said OG I'm like damn you can tell like <laughs> You know what I mean? But he like, OG9, oh, son, I ain't directed. He, I'm talking about these bitch ass motherfuckers, you know what I mean? So he made it clear, like, nah, I'm not you motherfuckers knowing he stopped randomly pointing at mother. You know what I'm talking about? This bitch ass nigga, this bitch ass. He pointing at mad dudes, like 10, 11 dudes, and out of 10, 11 dudes, like eight of them was black. So either way around, I already turned on the music. I'm not going to dance, so I already stood up. So I'm like, nah, I don't know what been going on in this motherfucking house, but ain't nobody violating nobody black in this motherfucker. That's a rap. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but I think you had a couple of them. Now, I ain't going to front and sit there acting like they were scared and they were suckers because a couple of them did stood up, but they seen that we wasn't playing. But the whole time in my mind, I, I, I can't believe I was sucking to this shit. I'm trying to give time back. Here it is. How the fuck I'm in the middle of a motherfucking house with a ratchet in my hand ready to go the fuck off. I'm not even supposed to be on that type of energy, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like I said, like, oh, boy, running his mouth to pull and the pole the same way our police saw him. They saw me, too. I ain't give a fuck about none of that shit. Like, but... At the end of the day, me and son ain't never been cool. They just stayed there, and I ended up getting a corner bed that same night. And homeboy from Jersey, I almost forgot. He was like, man, where the fuck you think you at, man? He said, this is jail. Fuck you, you that comfortable when you leaving your shit around? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, I like this, son. Like, me and son got cool, and I'm mad as a motherfucker that I forgot son's name, and he's somewhere on my motherfucking Instagram. I just don't know what to punch in. I forgot, man. Word. But shout out to him for sure, man, because he definitely, and he ended up going, getting, um, you know, taken back to a jail in Jersey or whatever the case may be. But he definitely was a stand-up dude, man. He was like, yo, I'm from Jersey. I got my hands. <laughs> so, so, but like I said, the Spanish dudes, I'm not saying they were suckers. And then a dude named E from the Bronx, 
he used to cut my hair all burn. He had one home and came back through. And 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 he was Latin King. All them dudes was Latin King. Most of them was Latin King. So he kind of had them dudes under his wing. So we kind of coexisted like that. It was still a black phone, still a Spanish phone and all that type of shit. You know what I mean? And everybody coexisted. You know what I mean? I remember they had me under the gang files. I'm not even no gang member, but one time they came and searched the house. Here it is. I got 11 years in at this time. You know what I mean? Never been in no gang files. Now all of a sudden, they told me I'm East Homicide Brim, which is not a now with the funk gang. But at that time, you know, I don't even know if they were still kicking at that time. But I'm like, you know, you have blood dudes saying, nah, he ain't blood, but every time they're coming for it, like, they come search the house, but they only searching, it's called the SRG search. They only search gang member shit. And I was always one to get searched and shit. And I'm like, that shit is crazy. So, so that was a problem too, but the house itself, um, the house itself was good money. Eventually, I remember one time when they kept serving cold food. And, you know, I don't know what made me, like I said, I keep saying I wasn't on that type of time, but here it is, I'm doing that type of time shit, right? So I told all the house, I said, next time they bring the food in, we gonna refuse to bring the motherfucking, um, we gonna refuse to turn back in the trades and shit. The dude was all for it. The blacks, the Spanish, everybody was all for it. And, and, um, when they came to get the trays, we wasn't giving the trays back. So they ended up getting the squad. So I'm like, yo, man, yo, y'all ready? Cause it's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? And before the squad came in, dudes start giving up their trays. I remember being mad as a motherfucker, but I ended up catching a reality check. Cause it was a dude that was from around my way that was in there and he was like your son man you gotta understand I was like y'all talking all this shit I'm saying this after they already left after everybody gave up their trades I'm wilding on the house and my, the dude pulled me up he was like son you gotta understand you got all these years in I just was fucking two weeks ago <laughs> you know what I mean my mind frame ain't even on this shit you know what I mean I don't give a fuck what kind of food they, I, I, just, I, I just was home so he said you kind of like Todd and it kind of made me realize like oh shit <laughs> I start thinking back to when I first came through I'm like I wouldn't have gave a fuck about this shit either you know what I mean so here I got all these years and so my mind is like hold up why the food ain't hot you know what I'm saying so that was kind of like a reality check for me but I didn't go through that shit without getting into nothing and I'm about to share that with y'all right now it was this other old time from around my way you know what I mean he you know he had to he 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 was getting a bag I know he no getting a bag he was a dude that was fucking with the bag in the street and all that so he came through he was fucked up but eventually after a couple push ups he was high but he was on some real Christian shit so every night every night they used to fucking um want to go back to the back of the dorm and say a little prayer like he started a little Christian little crew there and it'd be like 15 of the motherfuckers in the, in the back and they fucking um doing a little praying and all that. He always invite me. I ain't never go to that shit, you know what I mean, respectfully. But I did make sure the house was quiet while they did their little prayer thing. It only took 15, 20 minutes. It wasn't, enough, it wasn't a lot to ask for, but son came to me, so I made sure. And the Spanish dude, like I said, the Spanish dude, they wasn't weak. They wasn't weak at night, and they just, you know, it was just a respectful situation. And I kind of respected how they was moving. I seen how they was moving in it as a unit. I remember one time, this motherfucking, um, this old time Spanish dude came in the house, and he was fucked up. I mean, he was scratching. He was still dope sick crazy. The first day, you know what they did? I goes in the bathroom. They got this motherfucker in there ass naked. Was and they got soap and water. And they washing this motherfucker body from head to toe. They washing his, They washing him. I'm not talking about beating his ass washing. I'm talking about washing him with soap and water. They they washing him. You know what I mean? They washing him from head to toe. You know what I'm saying? They got him together. And a couple of weeks later, he was right. 
I seen black dope fiends come through there. They, they got ridiculed. You know what I'm saying? So I seen how they move. They took care of their own, yo. And that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? I respected that shit about them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But it was a lot of shit, you know, that I that I didn't respect either. You know what I mean? But it's for the most part, I respected them. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, getting back to this old time of that from around my way, the Christian dude, right? So he worked in the kitchen. So he had access to certain shit. Now it was a let me get to this dude named it was a blood dude named Scrappy. He was in the house when that Spanish dude with the now mind you, mad months passed by then. So this Scrappy dude, he um he was a blood dude. He was right from the Grenada or some shit like that. Turned out to be a baby killer. He was a baby killer. That's why he was in print. He wanted to do that was right down for like three years and shit like that. But anyway, he was he was a dude that you know, like, would try to fall his weight around. Because he was a little stocky. More. He wasn't stocky. He was a fat motherfucking chubby dude. And, you know, I'm like, damn, like, you, like, you see the same way we looking at them Spanish dudes and seeing how they, they looking at us. Why this dude got to be the one that want to fuck shit up? And he was quiet when the dude with the patch on his eye was talking. Now, the dude with the patch on the eye, they was gone. Like I said, the house flipped a lot. Since then, it's four or five months later. But this dude was running around like his weight was up like that. And I always knew, I said, I'm going to clash with this dude one day, man. Already know I'm going to clash with this motherfucker one day. And the day came, and it was over my boy who, um, um, that I said was a Christian dude. He worked in the kitchen. He, um, so one day he tells me, yeah, we having chicken today. Be on point early in the morning. I'm gonna bring a bag of chicken. You know, we get we get our cook on or whatever. One thing about Rikers Island, the shit changed with that. You can really eat more than just cookies and, and sandwiches on commissary. You can really get your meal on. You know what I'm saying? So that shit changed a lot in that regard. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be on point. So then I'm laying, so I'm like, of course, you know, he doing that shit early in the morning when they come around with the breakfast early in the morning. That's when he got the chicken. So he told me we was going to be stashed at. So I, it was a dude from Best Star. And he got me mad too, man. You know what I mean? But you know, I you know, I I ain't have much to work with. Like it wasn't a lot of dudes from Brooklyn that I that I, that I fucked with like that. You know what I'm saying? I remember Rumble came through, but he was in a different house. Rumble from Fort Greene, salute to him. I remember Moosey came through, but he was in a different house. You know what I mean? And by the way, this is all on the west side of C95. You know what I'm saying? But it's on the west. Moosey came through, but he was in a different house. God bless him, man, for real, man. Um, I remember when he, real, real quick, I remember when I caught one of the cases that I was in prison for, you know what I mean? It was a robbery shit, you know what I mean? And I remember we was about to book something, and I saw Moosey. I saw Moosey, and I told him what he was about to do, and I was like, yo, you want in? All I need you to do, and he was like, nah, son. He said, I don't do that type of shit no more, man. I do misdemeanor shit, and he boosts clothes, shit that he know he coming home from and all that. And that turned out to be one of the cases. I went through with it. That turned out to be one of the cases that I was up north for. So I don't see Moosey all this time until he, I come back down, to, and I'm in C95. He come through for a violation. And he was like, and when I told him, he's like, look, see what I told you. Like, he told me, soon as he saw me, he said, look what I told you. You know what I mean? He remembered that day and shit. Word. But my son, you know what I mean? He ain't no longer with, he no longer with us and shit, man. Rest in power, Moosey, man. Real shit. And I was with him, and I was with him the morning, the morning that, you know, the day he got killed, I was with him that morning, which is crazy. But that's another story. But anyway, I keep, I keep going from the topic. The old dude. So I sent the dude from Bed Star. Like I said, you know, uh, you know, Brooklyn. I try to make some Brooklyn shit happen, but I ain't have much to work with. He was he was the closest thing that was I. Right, but you could tell he had a lot of tender spots with him. You know what I mean? But I sent him. I said, Yo, son, said the chicken's gonna be right there. Go get it. So he went. He came back in. He said, I don't see the chicken nowhere. 
I said, yo, bro, he said it's going to be right there. He went back out there because it's in the dorm. So all he got to do is just go right there. And the west side, the, the dorms is like outside. He said, I don't see no chicken. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck, man? This dude just said word that the chicken is out there. So I got up myself and I went out there and I ain't see no motherfucking chicken. I'm like, damn, somebody just stole the chicken. Because son ain't going to say he put the chicken there if, it wasn't, if he ain't do it. So I said, so sure enough, son come back from the kitchen after he do his job or whatever. They come back in the morning. It's still morning time. He's like, yo, you got, I was like, nah, where you put it at? He told me, I said, damn, somebody swiped the chicken. Now it's crazy. But before, before that, we saw this dude in the, this tall fucking wino looking motherfucker eating the chicken, eating some chicken. And I think the dude from Best Style went and asked me, he's like, nah, nah, but it wasn't, it wasn't alarming because uh, everybody who worked in that kitchen was stealing. So it was nothing to see somebody else give somebody else a bag of chicken. So he could have been telling the truth. We ain't think nothing of it. So now when son come back from his job, I said, yo, son, the chicken. He said, nah. So he was like, yo, that shit is crazy. So he said, we just saw son eating chicken. So he said, like, how you get that chicken? So he tried to lie and say he got it from his man in another house. He said, where your man at? He didn't want to say nothing. So now the dude from Best Star, he goes in the day room and just start pounding on the dude. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't condone that. I didn't even know he was going to do that. I was going to let it ride. Fuck it. I got on the commissary. It's not that serious. The dude that was a Christian, he definitely was a harmless dude. He was a, but the dude from Bad Star, I guess he wanted to prove his work. He went in there, he popped on the dude. But now, the dude's scrappy, who have nothing to do with this situation whatsoever. He comes up from the back and go, remember, I said, I always knew I'm going to get it in with this dude. And this was the day. He don't have nothing to do. Even though I didn't condone son going in there to pound on son. He shouldn't have did that. Not over no fucking chicken. Like, it wasn't that serious. But, and I was going to tell him that. But all I know, the dude coming in, he comes in the day room with son pounding. He said, yo, what the fuck? Who said you could pop on? Who said you could do this and all this? Like, yo, what the fuck? Know what I mean? Like, he, like he trying to police this shit. And he see me standing right there like he, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of part of the situation. So I feel like he talking about me too. I'm like, yo, bro, yo, you don't got nothing to do with this situation. I guess he felt the same way I felt. I guess he knew that he was going to always get it on with me too. Because he said something yeah. to that effect. He was like, yo, bro, I'm saying, man, like, I've been waiting for this. Like, I'm like, oh, what? Like, yo, go to the back. So he tell the police and everything, yo, yo. Yo, can you step out for a minute? I'm about to hand you some business. <laughs> In my mind, yo, yo, last, I'm not just saying this, but your boy got hands. And I'm not talking about regular hands. I'm talking about serious hands. Like, my shits is serious. You know what I mean? So I said, I'm going to beat the flames out this motherfucker in his back. I got my blicky in my pocket. Now, he a blood dude. It was only like two bloods in the house. So they not really strong in the house. And even the two bloods in the house, one of them was from PA. He just came to New York and got knocked. He was from Yorktown, P York, PA. I, me and him was I, right. and the other dude, I don't remember where he was from, but they, neither one of them even liked it, son. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was a couple of dudes that didn't know which side to be on, and I get it, because none of them was built like that. So I go to the back of the day room, we throw our shits up. Yo, I, it, it wasn't even a dump, like, I just start pounding him to the point where he start trying to grab me, and he went to bite me. I said, son, if you bite me, I'm going to blow your face off, like, literally. I'm going to go in my pocket, I'm going to blow your face off. Like, I humbled him. When I got him on the floor and he got back up, I thought he was going to pop. He got and sat on his bed. Now, I'm one of them type of dudes, I don't really like leaving shit where there's no type of resolution. Like... It's no type of resolution. I know how son give it up. I seen him get it get it on with dudes as far as like dudes that he but none of them dudes fought back. None of them dudes like he was a, a like a dude that was had some size on him. And plus he blood, so he was pushing that. He was pushing that and dudes was folding to that, but he ain't fuck with them Spanish dudes. 
And I always remember he was quiet when son, and he was already in the house. He was in the house before me. He was quiet when I first got there when a the dude with the patch on his eye made that speech. He ain't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so I stand, he's sitting on his bed. I'm standing over him like, yo, what's up? He was like, yo, son, that's, you know, ain't nothing that we fought like men. And from that time on, I ain't have a problem with him. But one time I came out the bathroom, he laying on the floor. He ended up getting knocked out by one of them Spanish dudes. Because he still was doing this stupid shit, but he wasn't doing it in my direction. So I ain't really give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? But we was, man, it was all right. But um, he ended up getting knocked out, and his career was definitely over after that. Like, he was done. But, so... Outside of that, man, I ain't going front. It was a different type of time on Rikers Island, period. I know it was mad shit that I forgot, that I might have forgot to say during this shit, but I was on this shit long enough. You know what I'm saying? But that was my last time on Rikers Island. You know what I mean? I ended up getting um, 15 joints. Remember, I had 22 for one case, 16 for the other shit. So I ended up getting 15 for everything, you know what I mean? So I got a year less for one case and um, seven years less for the other case. So that eight years all together and I'm home. Other way, if it wasn't for that, I'd still be in prison right now. Literally, I'd still be there right now. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm out here and I'm trying to do the right thing, you know what I'm saying? Boom. Shout out to last again, you know what I mean? Because... um. You know, regardless of what anybody say, you know what I mean, on this when it comes to these jail stories, last pioneered this shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, we had our little just um maybe I don't wanna say disagreements where but at the end of the day, son, you know, he pioneered this shit. I'm keeping it on the eye, at least for me. Cause before that I'm just rhyming. So now I got a series called Talking That Walk, you know what I mean, on YouTube. I, I'm eight episodes in where I'm telling jail stories. And as far as content, I'm good with that. You know why? Because the content is me. <laughs> you know, so I'm always going to have it. It's me. So, and I'm about to do an episode nine where I'm featuring a couple of Brooklyn generals. But once again, like I said, I got to give it up to lag. I say that all the time. Like, you know what I mean? Because, um... <laughs> That jail story shit, you know, I even never thought of it. I never thought that shit would be what it became until I seen Laz, and that's a fact. So salute the Laz on that. And um, like I said, as far as this story right here, man, it, it probably wasn't as 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 blood wrenching as other stories because, like I said, I came back down with a different kind of mind state. state. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I, I'm a little older, you know what I mean? And I still got it. <laughs> but I wasn't trying to give it unless it was um, the situation called for it. And um, so I didn't really have to be on that type of time. But it was a lot of shootings. It definitely was a lot of shootings. Like a lot of them gang members. One thing I forgot to say, and I'm going to add this in real quick. I seen the craziest shit. Where, you know, it was a lot of gang shit going on. You had blood, you had crips, you had pot deals, you had folks, so on and so on. Where, you know, when I was coming through on the island, you know, police got the keys, so they run shit, but the inmates kind of ran shit. The prisoners kind of ran shit how, how we ran it. Now it's like police more or less dictate everything. And they, they set up some houses at one time where they put a member from each gang in a house. It's like five houses together to try to... And I'm all for gangs coming to peace. But that shit, you don't have to do it like that. And you know, all y'all motherfuckers go to y'all and y'all talk that shit out amongst yourself. You don't need police to help y'all do anything. And I don't even think that shit worked anyway. You know what I mean? Because motherfuckers are still getting clapped. I don't even think that shit worked. But anyway, right, it's Allen Chains. I said that was my last, you know, I told y'all about my last time being there. And hopefully, it really is my last time. You know, I ain't out here doing stupid shit. So hopefully, it is my last time. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, LAZ. Three great movies that if you call yourself a movie buff, yo ass better see. Number one, Sugar. One of the most powerful movies I ever saw. You heard? 
If you Dominican out there and you ain't see this right here, you super lacking. This movie is riveting. I just always wanted to say that word. Number two, probably my all time favorite. The spook who sat by the door. If you black and you ain't see this movie, you should be ashamed of yourself. Number three, Ghost Dog, starring Forrest Whitaker. One of the most underrated movies of all time. It's too many people who didn't see this great film. This is a great film. This is a masterpiece. And that's a whole fact. Anybody who ever saw this movie, they'll tell you that. What's going on, guys? Car livery. Guess what? My client's first car. And guess what she got it with? Car livery. We delivering the car to her. First day she got a license. First day she got her car. Got my license yesterday. I got my license yesterday and I got my car today. Thanks for car livery. Hey, yo, new book from Lakey out now. Go cop that. Yo, listen, man, I got some major dudes that be checking out my Instagram reels. You heard? My Instagram reel game is serious. So if you out there and you need to promote something, a business, a clothing brand, an artist, a new mixtape, new album, video, whatever it is you out there trying to push, you might want to be on these Instagram reels I'm throwing out here, baby. You already know I got the YouTube promo popping. But if you need that double dragon, that Instagram and YouTube promo, get at me. As always, holla at the bro life through galleries if you need a photographer. LAZ, three great movies that if you call yourself a movie buff, yo ass better see. Number one, Rosario to Jedez. Not the series the movie from 2005 it is a masterpiece and it's the greatest latin film i've ever seen make sure you see it number two marathon man dustin hoffman 1976 this movie is crazy it's a new york classic but that teeth scene is hard to stomach. Number three, Vanilla Sky. This is actually a remake from, I think, a French movie. But this movie right here is heavily deep. And it's one of Tom Cruise's best movies for a fact. Make sure you see that. 